In this video, I'll be demonstrating some of the more advanced transformations that you can make when working with nodes in Inkscape by showing you how to create this cassette tape design. And this will be more of an advanced tutorial in that I'm not gonna be going over every step in fine detail, but if you're already somewhat familiar with the software, you should be able to get a sense of what I'm doing as I go through these steps. So I'm gonna come over here into new document and get started. I'm gonna draw a rectangle to start off and let me grab my selection tool. I'm gonna to make this rectangle I believe I used 400 by 250. And let me zoom in on this. Let me go back to my rectangle tool. I'm gonna to make these corners a little rounded. There we go. And now I'm gonna put some circles in the corners to uh, serve as screws, the screws in the corners of the uh, cassette tape. So I'll put that right there. And I'll make a few copies of this. I'm gonna press Control D or Command D to duplicate it. Move this over here. Make another duplicate of these. Bring these down here. And I'm gonna group these together and I'm gonna center this up on the document here. So let me open this up and center it. So now I have the four screws centered in the uh, corners of the cassette tape, as you can see here, that's uh, this part of the design. So let me come back in here and next I'm going to create the bottom part, this, uh, this little bottom part of the design right here. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool again and I'm gonna click and drag to draw a rectangle. And I'm gonna make the corners of this one sharp for now. I'm gonna go back and make those corners rounded later on, but I first wanna change the, I wanna distort the shape of this. So I'll convert this to a path, grab my nodes tool, and I wanna grab these two nodes right here. And let me scale those down. I don't know why that just layered beneath the other object, but I'll have to raise that up again. Let me move that up. Okay, that looks good right there. I wanna round these corners a little bit, so I'm gonna come over here and choose the, uh, this handy new feature, the corners live path effect. I'm gonna select all of the nodes, and I'm gonna scale. Let me turn off the scaling handles, and I'm gonna bring this in like this, just to make these rounded. There we go. And I just wanna make sure that this is centered. There we go, and I'm gonna put some more I'm gonna put these, uh, these little round parts of the design in there now. So let me come back over here. And for that, I'll just duplicate. Let me ungroup these circles. I'm just gonna duplicate these circles and use these copies to make those, uh, to make those parts of the design. I'll scale that up. Duplicate that. Control D or Command D is the shortcut for duplicating. Very handy shortcut to know. Move that over. Let me zoom out a little bit to see how that looks in proportion. I guess that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll make it a little smaller. And I'm gonna duplicate these and I will flip these horizontally and move these over here. And now I wanna center this up on the uh, bottom part of this design here. So let me group that and I'll center these together. Let me move that down. It looked better down there. There we go. Now I can ungroup them. Okay, so the next part of the design I will make is I'll make this inner part of the cassette tape or the label. So let me come back in here. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and I'm gonna make a rectangle in the, uh, on the inside of the uh, cassette tape there. And let me just make sure I have this centered up on the other rectangle. There we go. And I'm gonna change this a little bit. Let me make this a little less tall vertically. And I wanna convert this to a path as well. And now to make the corners have this cutoff effect, we're gonna use a path effect for that. So let me come back over here to my nodes tool and I wanna enable the corners live path effect again. And I wanna select both of these and now I can roll them down like that. Now the corners are rounded right now, but that's okay. We're gonna go in and change that setting. So I'm gonna open up the path effects menu, path, path effects. And now I should be able to change the corners to chamfer. And now I have those squared corners that I preferred. Let me make those a little less, let me scale those down a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Now we can close out of that. Uh, let me get out of that. And the next part I guess I will make, I, I'll start working on the little spindles here in the center. This is uh, probably the most elaborate part of this whole thing. So let's go get that started. I'm gonna grab my circles and ellipses tool and I'm gonna Click and drag to draw a circle. And let me move this over. I'm gonna duplicate this circle and make this circle a little smaller. 
And I'm gonna make these teeth that go on the inside of the, uh, the spindle there. So let me deselect everything. And to do this, I'm gonna use clones, and this is gonna make it a lot easier to adjust things. I'll show you what I mean here. I'm gonna click and drag to draw a rectangle. It's gonna represent one of the teeth of this, uh, of the spindle. And I'm gonna right click this and go to, instead of duplicate, I'm gonna use clone. And I'm gonna take the clone copy and I'm gonna bring it down here. And I just wanna group both of these together, make sure I have them centered on the circle. So let me come back over here to my align and distribute menu. And now I'm gonna clone these again. So I'm gonna right click and go to clone and I'm gonna rotate this copy that many steps and then I'll clone that again. So I'll right click that, go to clone and I'll rotate it. Hold the control key and just rotate it around like that. There we go. Now the reason I did that is because if I wanna change the width of these teeth, sometimes you'll make it too big or too small without realizing it. Uh, you'll have to go back and undo all of it. When you use clones though, you can just adjust one of them and it adjusts all of them. So I'm gonna hold my shift key and scale this part in like that. And it's gonna change the size of all the other teeth like that. So let me move that out a little bit. It looked better in a larger size. Let me zoom out a little bit. It's hard to really perfectly visualize how it's gonna look until you unify it with the other shape. Let me try that one more time. Okay, I think I'll leave that as it is. I'm gonna select all of these now. I have all of them selected and I'm gonna unlink the clones. So I'll go to edit and I will choose clone and I will select unlink clone. And now I can ungroup them. We'll go to object ungroup and unify them all together. Path, union, and then subtract it from that smaller circle. So I'll hold shift and click on that circle and go to path difference. And now we have the teeth of, the, uh, of that wheel there. Let me scale that up a little bit. And I'll take this part and scale this down. And now I'm gonna create the, uh, the tape going around the, uh, the wheel here. So let me zoom back out. Let me come back in here and I'll take this larger circle. I'm gonna remove the fill and I'm gonna make a duplicate of this. I'm gonna press Command D and then hold Control and Shift and scale this up about that much. And I'm gonna take both of these circles now and I'm going to combine them together. So I'll go to Path and I will choose Combine. And now I'm going to apply the interp Interpolate Path Effect. So I'm gonna come over here to my Path Effects menu and I'm looking for Interpolate. Uh, interpolate, interpolate subpaths, not points. The one they use here is subpaths. And now I can increase or decrease the uh, number of paths between those circles. I think this looks good with seven for now, but I'm gonna go back and change that later as I adjust things. So for now that looks good, I'll leave it at seven. And next I will, I'm gonna make a duplicate copy of this and move this over here so we have two of these now. So I'm gonna select all of these, let me group it together. Let me duplicate this and just move this one over like that. And then I'll group these together and then center them on this uh, larger rectangle. And that looks pretty good. Okay, let me ungroup those now. And now I'm going to trim off the edges. I'm gonna create, I'm gonna create the inner part, like the window, I guess you can call it, of this cassette tape. And I'm gonna trim off all of the other excess areas. So let me come back in here and to do that, I'm going to turn on my snapping and I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'll start the rectangle up here and I'll end it down here like that. And I'm gonna grab my selection tool now and I'm gonna snap it to the right edge and then snap it to the left edge. Basically, I'm creating a rounded rectangle that goes around the two wheels of the cassette tape. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool now and round the corners. There we go, that's the effect I'm going for. And what I'll do next is I'm gonna convert this to a path. We'll go to path, object to path. Grab my selection tool and I'm gonna duplicate this. And now I wanna select all of the wheels. I'm gonna select the, uh, I'm gonna select this wheel right here. And I'm gonna hold shift and select this wheel right here. And I wanna group them all together by pressing command G or control G. And I wanna take this duplicate copy and then select the grouped wheels and go to object, clip, set clip. So now it is a clipped object. And what I could do now is I can take this rectangle and duplicate that, we'll go to duplicate, and I will apply an offset to that. So I will go to path and choose dynamic offset. Let me go to my nodes tool. I'm gonna take this node and bring that out. Let me turn off my snapping for now. 
And I think that looks pretty good as it is. I think I will leave it like that. Now I wanna create some asymmetry between these two wheels here. If you notice in my original design, there's more tape on this wheel than there is on this wheel. So that's the effect I wanna uh, I want to create. To do that, I'm going to, uh, and this is where path effects really come in handy because this is still editable as a path effect. So if I go to my nodes tool, I can still select this and I'm gonna select these nodes. I'm gonna hold shift and click on them and I'll turn on my transformation handles and now I can scale this up like that and all those other circles in there scale with it. The problem is that they're a little more spaced out. So I'm gonna go back into my uh, path effects menu and add some more sub paths in there. And I'll do the opposite over here. I'll maybe shrink this one down a little bit. Let me move this over and let me select these nodes. And I'll scale these ones down. And now I will remove some of those sub paths in there to make it look evenly spaced out with the other ones. So that looks a lot better, I think. Let me turn off the uh, transformation handles. And that looks a lot better. We have some asymmetry there now between those two uh, objects. Now I just want to size this up so it fits the cassette tape overall and, uh, and it's nicely aligned. Um, you know what, before I do that, let's trim off all of this other excess stuff because if I go to my nodes tool, you can see if I hover my cursor, these other lines still exist within the clip. You just don't see them because they're hidden behind the clipping mask that we created. I want to finalize these and make these um, like plain vector paths. So to do that, I'm going to select this all and I'm gonna come over here into the Shape Builder tool, and now I'm just gonna build the shape that I want out of this. So I'm gonna click on this part to add that, and everything that I make blue is going to be what gets kept, and everything that's not blue will be deleted. So I'm gonna combine all of this together. And I'm making separate shapes out of each of these because I want everything in here to be its own shape so I can add color to it, which you will see in just a few minutes. So that right there is what I'm going for. I want everything divided into its own shape. And if I go back to my selection tool, now it is everything, uh, it's, it's designed just how I want it. So I have these individual shapes here that I can edit and work with however I need. So now that that's done, let me select everything here and group it together. And I wanna center it up over this rectangle. So let me come back into my alignment tab. And I may have to make this one a little bigger relative to the relative to the uh, the tape because normally the wheel goes out almost past the corner of this uh, part of the tape right here. So I got to make mine. Oops, let me undo that. I got to make mine a little bigger. Uh, maybe not bigger, but longer. So let me ungroup everything. I'm going to grab my nodes tool and I'm going to select these nodes over here and I'll just move these over like that. And now we're elongating it without having to um, scale it. So let me group it together now and let me try centering it again, see if it looks any better. And that's more along the lines of what I'm going for. You know what, I think something got taken off center here. Let me redo that. This is one of the downsides of working with a trackpad. If I'm working with the mouse, I don't have that problem. So now let's, uh, let's make these little lines right here. This, this is like a blank label where you can write in your own label on the uh, cassette tape. I'm gonna grab the pen tool to make those. Hold control so we get a straight line, press enter to close the path, and I'm gonna make this the same size as the strokes on the other shapes, which is three. So I'll come back over here, stroke style tab, make this three pixels. I want this to have rounded caps. And I'll make a duplicate of this and bring this down here. So I'm gonna hold the control key. That looks good. Maybe I'll make this a little bigger. And I'm just gonna size this up and adjust it until it looks right. Okay, there we go. So I'm going for a nice balanced look here where everything is spaced up, spaced out nicely. I'm gonna ungroup that now. And the cassette tape part of the design is finished. Now I wanna create this, um, this rainbow ribbon background here that I put behind the cassette tape. So let me come back over here. For this, I wanna make sure I have my snapping enabled. And I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and I'm gonna draw a elongated rectangle and I'm gonna make the corners sharp. And I wanna make cop I want to make five copies of this. So I'm gonna press Control D to make a copy. I'll snap this copy over here to the left end or to the right end, and I'll just repeat this until I have five copies. There we go. Let me select all of those, convert them to a path. Path, object to path. And now I'm gonna do I'm gonna duplicate these and I'm gonna put these down here and snap these to the bottom. And this time I'm gonna go with combine. So I'll go with uh, path, 
and I will choose combine. And I'm going to move this up. And now I want to use the perspective path effect to make this uh, wider. So I'm going to come back over here to my path effects and I'm looking for perspective. There we go. Grab my nodes tool. I want to lock this in the, uh, or mirror it in the vertical axis. And now I can just scale that out like that. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to convert that to a path as well. We'll go to path, object to path. Grab my selection tool. And I want to break this apart. So I'll go to path and I will choose break apart. And now these should already be broken apart. Yeah, I need these to be individual objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start unifying these objects together. I'm going to hold my option key or alt key and just draw a line between those two objects. Unify them together by going to path union or the keyboard shortcut is control shift and the plus key. So I'm just going to use that for the rest of these. We're going to repeat this process I'm going to select those, unify those together. Do the same thing over here. Oops, let me deselect that. Control shift plus, deselect, select these ones. And there you go. Just one more to go. Okay, so that's what we're going for now. And to make these rounded, what I will do is I want to select all of them first. So I'm going to hold shift and click on each of these. And I want to combine these together. So I'll go to path and I will choose combine. Let me move, move this out of the way of the cassette tape. I'm going to turn off the snapping now. And I'm going to go back to the nodes tool and I'm going to turn on the corners live path effect for this. And I'm going to select these nodes right here. Let me try that again. There we go. And I'm just going to round this like that. So we get a nice rounded effect there. Okay, that looks good. I'll leave that as it is. And now I'm going to go into my shape builder tool and I'm just going to click on each of these one by one to make sure that they are all separate shapes and that they no longer have the path effect applied. They're just plain vector paths. And there you go. Now we're finished. So let me go back over here now and I could take this and move this over here. You know what? Let me leave this here. I'm going to take the cassette tape, group it together and place it over on top of uh, this backdrop here. I want to raise this up so it's layered above it. And I'm going to center both of these. And the final step is to just add some color, as you can see that I've done over here in my uh, original design. So let me come back in here. I'm going to start coloring this thing in. So I'll start with these stripes down here. Let me ungroup these or break them apart, rather. Object, path, break apart. And for the colors, it was just red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. So I'll add some variation of those shades. Let me start with this one. And now I'm going to start adding some color to the cassette tape. So let me ungroup that now. And I want to change the color. I'm going to use this object right here as a starting point. I'll make that one white. And I'll make this one white as well. And the smaller shape inside of it, I'm going to hold my Alt key to select that smaller shape. And I'm going to make this a dark shade of gray. About as dark as it can get without it, contra without it losing its contrast with the black stroke. So I'm going to go with a really dark shade. Let me go over here to my Fill and Stroke menu and adjust this manually. Make it a little darker. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to use this shade for a lot of other things. So I'm going to select this one over here. Use the same color with my dropper tool. And I will select this shape in here. Let me try that again. There we go. I want to make that the same color. And I want to make all of these wheels that same color or that same shade of gray rather. There we go. And I could take this rectangle. I'm going to make this a darker shade of gray. I'll make this a lighter shade of gray. And I'll make this one over here a much lighter shade of gray. It's going to be gray, but it's going to be much lighter. And now I'm going to take the, uh, well, I'm going to take this shape right here. I'll start here and I will make this the same shade of gray that this cassette tape is. And now I could take the tape inside of here or the rolls of uh, tape and I'm going to select all of those and make them this shade. Maybe I'll make these a little bit darker. And then I'll do the same thing over here with these ones. I'll select these ones as well.
and I'm not quite satisfied with the contrast between these darker shades of gray. So let me make those a little darker. I'm going to select that and I want to apply this to all of the other objects that have that color. So I'll go to edit, select same, and I'll choose fill color. And now that I have those all selected, I can change the shade and darken it as needed. Okay, that looks good enough. All right, so I guess one last step would be to add a background as I've done here. Let me just go back in here. I'm gonna turn on snapping to do this. Makes it a lot easier. I'll snap to this corner and then I'll snap to this corner up here. And now I can just grab my selection tool and scale this out as needed. Again, using the snapping controls. Let me send this to the bottom. Let me make this a shade of yellow. I'll use this as a starting point, but I want it to be lighter. And there you go, that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can use some of the more advanced uh, node editing features in Inkscape to create something like this cassette tape design. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.